So while all my various glues and things are drying on the bridge, I thought we would uh, move forward a little bit. So there's our bridge going in. So then we've got decks. I've got a little bit to do in there first before we can put the decks on. So I thought we'd start building up these um, main structures. So we'll start here with step 29 and put this together. Step 31, um, it has ladders which come down or stair staircase that comes down and then comes down again. My intention is to remove the lower one so we can replace that with, with photo etch which will look more accurate. But I'm keeping that top one because it forms the shape of the bulkhead here at the back. So removing that would create quite a big issue for us. We have a bulkhead here that goes in that um, sits back there a little bit. So um, I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Right, let's get these bits glued together. So step 32, which is the inner part of the, the funnel, or the funnel main body, I guess. Um, the fit's not brilliant, and I had to remove the uh, location pins to improve it. Um, just needs a little bit of fill and sand. It's nothing major. Um, and we need to do um, more than you might think on the top of this, because when you look at this, there's quite a bit of exhaust staining and heat staining. So we need to think about that. Um, and I just want to check that we've not got some etch that replaces that. It wouldn't surprise me if we did. Um, but I want to go back and have a look at that in, in a bit more detail, I think. But that's that step 32 done. 
Now the next step um, puts these on. I'm not going to put those on for now, but what we will do is clean those up so that they're ready to go. Um, I don't think there's any reason why we can't put that on. So I have built up um, the base bit of step 34. I don't want to put the um, funnel on because we've got stuff that we want to do with it and probably need to paint it first. We have uh, an opening and closing glass roof to put in there and I don't want to do that yet. Um, we've got to glaze the inside of that. And I'm not sure if that bulkhead's the right shape so I just want to check the bulkhead before I stick that in but it's cleaned up and will fit now if needs be. So next I'm going to tackle step 36 which is these four pieces. Um, and it's basically the extension that goes behind this piece here. So that's why we've got a gap there. This is all going to get sorted by this, hopefully. Um, so this should sit on top of that line there like so. Um, and then the funnel will complete over there. So, or the funnel surround the air scoop bit. So let's get that bit done. This is going to be a bit tricky when we come to paint it because the front face is black in the daytime um, and the side face, the side edges are uh, like stainless steel. So I think we're going to have to paint the whole thing stainless steel and then black face it. I'm not sure. Um, maybe painting the white last. It's going to be tricky. That's going to be the toughest painting job on the ship, I think. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. Get the parts cleaned up. Okay, so let's start with this top piece. Now, all these parts are fitting around um, an, a grooved edge here. We need them to look seamless when they go on, so I'm just taking the nubs off. And then we can test fit the parts. Other way around. There we go, yeah, we will have to do some fill and sand, I think. And we'll go back round all of these sub assemblies that we've been making um, and fine tune them. We've got sanding to do on all of them, but where we've got these little handrails that need to be brown, it's actually easier to take them off, paint the micro strip, and put them on um, than to try and paint what they've got on. Just get that nice and smooth. We'll run some glue into that first one. Then we can look at this one and we might just put this in for lining up right now. Yeah, I think we'll put this piece in glued into place first. Better sink in these end pieces. I'm just getting that nice and flat, it'll look terrible if we don't. Next one we want it, and we can put 
that in, making sure we've orientated it the right way around. Don't want the doors at the top. And up for some nasty accidents for the passengers. Right. Come on the two side pieces so it doesn't move. And then we'll let capillary action do its thing. And whilst the glue is all still uh, a little bit damp, we'll just get it nice and flat. There we go, that all looks good. So that, will attach to that like that, which it does. I'm not going to glue it in just yet. I want to see how that all fits on the deck. But that's the basic idea. And then that's going to go on there. And that's going to go on there like that. Something like that, anyway. So there we have our sub-assemblies just put together. Um, you can see that, that just fits on there, seems to fit okay. And I'm happy with that for now. So we'll leave them in their separate parts. And then that takes us to um, step 37, which is building up these five parts that, that build up this raised deck area. So let's do that next. Okay, so I think the uh, best way forward is to start by gluing in that piece there, um, as it's the one with the most positive fit. So if we get that little end housing in, Now both of those wings there just need to be held into place for a sec because they just um, want to spring out ever so slightly. There we go. I'll we'll just hold that in place for a sec. Okay, so that then takes us to that. I've not taken the nub off that one. Yeah. Each one of these pieces is going to need some holding into place. I need an eye test because I think I can't see as well as I used to. Right, I've got a little... Tucks in there like that. We won't be able to put this in last because of the way that bracket works. And then this last one. Doesn't fit. Look at that. That's not good, is it? That's miles away. Uh, right. Okay, this now fits uh, this part here. 
which goes on the end, you have to take about a millimetre or more off each end to get this to fit. It's just massively oversized. Uh, and then you can get this all tight in with the top of the deck there. Um, and also the location tabs. Um, I took them off first actually, uh, and then that makes this thinner and easier to sand down. So you can see that now fits. Uh, we've got a little bit of filling to do because I've not quite got it 100% straight when I've sanded it, but we're nearly there. So uh, it needs sanding anyway, so we can glue that in now. Right, our next sub-assembly is the um, main mast here, um, which is affected, uh, affectionately known as the Christmas tree. And I think I have one missing, so we'll have to think about that. Um, but it has a load of lights on, so you can see why they call it the Christmas tree. Uh, we've also got the um, three yards here, which are damaged and don't look particularly pretty and they're certainly not spherical so I'm going to replace them with some uh, brass rod um, and then we've got the main body here so let's let's start by getting that main body off I suspect this isn't going to fit so well Um, and we also need to hollow it out, which we need to do before we put the two halves together. Um, then on this, what we're going to do is trim these off and drill holes through to allow the brass rod to locate itself. Um, so I just want to see if the length of these is the same. So... That one is just a fraction over 11 millimeters. I will go as far as say it is 11 and a half. That one is 11. And that one is 11. Yeah, so if we go with 11 millimeters uh, plus the depth of this, which is pretty much one millimeter. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna cut our wire to uh, 12 millimeter lengths, three of them. Um, and I think it makes sense to um, tidy this up on the sprue and then we can uh, drill it nice and easily. I'm going to get rid of the flash on those two sides. Right, let's get a jig.
So this area here that's white needs to be painted in the same green that we've done on the inside of the uh, forward facing bridge structure. Um, so we've just got to paint the green in there. Now the back of the bridge is not completely flat like is shown here and should have a sort of a structure that comes out here and then there's all sorts of uh, shelving and there's some doors with a curtain and all that sort of stuff but actually when this is on and the roof is on you can virtually see nothing in there but uh, so I, I don't think it's going to be worth the effort um, unlike where we had the openings at the stern at the start of the build you're just not going to see it so my intention was to do that but but there's no point if it's not going to be seen. So then we put this front on and then we've got um, a, a roof to go on. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to glue this into place. Um, we're then going to glue this into place, which will allow me to go in carefully and glaze these. And then before we do anything else, we've got some little support pillars that run through the floor into the outside of here they need to be white um, and then inside the bridge they're green and they'll go up um, if we do them oversized we can just trim them off when we put the roof on um, so i'd like to put those in i think so that's sort of where we're up to right um glued in glued in what we've got to do now is glaze that area there, um, the forward observation deck, um, and you can see that the fit is a bit rubbish. So I just want to smarten that up a little bit. Um, this has been satin coated, but the rest of it hasn't. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, blend that in, fill that, blend that in a little bit, just we have to be a bit careful because we can't thin that down and and so on I mean it's just a bit rubbishy uh, we need to put some form of um, fillet in there um, some plastic rod because that's a big huge gap on the side there it's uh, it, it's basically a big triangular gap like that that we've got to fill um, so we're going to work on that in a sec uh, and then when that's done all of this white that you can see in shot uh, will get satin coated. Um, oh actually there's one other thing we need to do. The uh, little handrails that we put on the inside of here earlier on they now need to follow under these windows around the front. Now if you have the um, platinum edition of this you'll have some photo etch which goes here which is um, a little curved wind uh, uh, defender uh, with a with a roof on it that's not accurate for this model this model is as she was as launched um, so uh, that was an addition after she was launched so as launched that is just open as you can see here so that's how i'll be leaving it once we've got that all satined um, uh, or possibly once we've got the handrails on we'll then um, decide whether we're putting the decals on or whether we're masking and painting in the black stripes that go on these top three levels here um, and then we can satin coat everything and that's why this has already been satin coated once we've got decals to go on and then um, or potentially now having said that the bridge um, I have painted rather than using a decal which would be a real pain so it depends on whether the decal is working with my chosen black here but you get the basic idea um, and it feels like the bridge area once that's done and we've got our railings on uh, is done and we can move to putting the upper deck on and then we're motoring. Right, I'm going to use some 
Um, plastic rod. I'm just going to cut that to length initially. Okay, so I think that's roughly roughly the length we're looking for. Yeah. Um, so looking at that I reckon we can cut it in half along its length and then just sand it into shape right so I've cut this part we're going to put some glue on it in the first instance and if you go over it a couple of times it should stay sticky enough to place it and it not drop out there we go so that's not going to fully fill it as we can see um, but once we've sanded that into shape we can then fill that put a bit of filler in there um, fits not good at all so it's a bit of a problem um, but we need to at least blend that in without changing the shape of it so I'm almost thinking it's better to um, build this up this line here rather than thinning this down build that up to meet it um, I think which should look a little bit better so I'm going to get a little bit of white plastic card and see if we can do that okay so I've got a little strip of plastic card here I'm going to perhaps do this top section first there's my corner there so I'm just going to trim that sorry this is off camera but that's the pressure paper for being close um, and I'm using my Tamiya scissors which is what I use all the time for my uh, scratch building right there we go yeah so I'm gonna glue that into place I think Okay, first one's going to eat away through the paint a little bit. Second one's going to eat into the plastic. And then this third one is going to make it sticky. Okay, now we will have to do a little bit of filling, but it's only going to be minor stuff. Right, and then this bit here, we can just glue onto there like that. There you go, and that should make it easier for us to blend in this uh, bulk head edge um, and the front face. Um, and then we've got a decal to go in, so. Okay. 
I'm going to go and do the other side and then I'll come back to you. Now, of course, the ship has been upgraded. And when you look back, the original cabin style has been greatly improved with new furnishings and the like. Here we see a balcony cabin in the superstructure. And of course, right at the, the top end, there are the five duplex suites. But I'd like to show you now a comparison of the Queen's. And you see Queen Mary II there in the background, but you also see Cunard's first ship, the Britannia, that set sail on the 4th of July, 1840. And you could fit that ship inside the Britannia restaurant on board here. The original Queen Mary with three funnels and a bit less distinct maybe is the QE2 behind. This ship is enormous. And that's that scale that enables her to offset that 40% premium. So towards the end of 2003, we had two sets of sea trials. The first ones in September, when we really just made sure everything would be working correctly. We got a reasonable speed, but we still had a lot of growth weeds and the like on the bottom, so we hoped that we would do better. And here we are on that sea trial. Those aft two pods are being slewed round, and it demonstrated that this ship is more manoeuvrable than almost any other ship. Those pods really do kick the stern around, making her very, very manoeuvrable. And then in early November, we went out again, the bottom having been cleaned and painted. And we always seem to do the speed trials in the middle of the night and in the early hours. And here we are. And we achieved 29.62 knots, well above the contract speed. So the ship really had performed well. And the French were so proud of the ship that they sent their equivalent of the Red Arrows over in salute as we left San Azair. Now, Queen Mary II didn't straight away go on the Atlantic. It was determined that she, perhaps she should work up and enable the crew to get to use to being on such a big ship. So the ship did a number of cruises between January and April 2004. And the first transatlantic was the 16th of April, and in those days it was a six day crossing at 26 and a half knots. And Cunard were very worried because they said, You know, you've not designed a transatlantic liner before, and you're only 38 when you got this job. Do you really think it's going to work? And so I asked the test tank to perform a simulation taking all the model data that we had on the ship's performance, the satellite data from the weather patterns, and we set the ship electrically or electronically across to demonstrate that she would never be late. And that, that, that was the crucial thing, because arriving in port at 7 o'clock and leaving in mid-afternoon, you cannot afford to be late. And you see here the ship running on that particular course, and as she encounters rough weather, the speed drops, and you see the wave heights, the ship, and this is involuntary speed loss, so the weather is slowing the ship down, and I think it's the next one that is important, wallop. That huge storm, 10 to 12 meter high seas, brought the ship electronically to a halt. Now, what does that mean? Well, remember what I said, we have the power of Southampton in this ship. 120 megawatts, of which 85 are used to drive the ship forward. And yet the Atlantic, when it really kicks up rough, can stop this ship. But this simulation, and we, we did thousands of iterations, 
demonstrated that the ship would always be on time if everything on board was working correctly. And that was fortuitous because on that first transatlantic, the ship encountered not one huge storm, but two. And Commodore Warwick, who was the first master of the ship, called me up in my office and he said, I've never experienced anything like this. He said, the ship's behaving very well, but do you think the ship can take it? Should I press on at high speed or should I slow down? And I said, look, just go for it. It's what this ship is designed to do. And so he did. And he reached New York on time to be there with QE2. And they had two days together where the press were introduced to Queen Mary too. And if ever you need a photograph that demonstrates the difference between the 70,000 ton QE2 and the 150,000 ton Queen Mary 2, that surely must be it. But then the two ships left together on the 25th of April. And you remember what I said at the beginning where everybody said there would be no more transatlantic liners? Suddenly, back on the Atlantic, there were two transatlantic liners against all the odds. And that's why this ship is so special. Okay, so I have just been looking at the fit of the sub-assemblies we've built up. Um, and this particular one is causing a little bit of a problem. Um, obviously, these bulkheads are sit behind or in front I should say of these raised areas here like so when you do that you struggle to get the two parts to join so that's butted right up there and we've got a gap it doesn't want to sit and the reason is these two things here so you, you've got a couple of options you can sand them back a little bit or you can do what I'm going to do which I think is just cut them off we don't really I don't see that they're actually adding any value so I'm just going to take them off um, and hopefully that will be enough to sort the problem so we'll just get a little file in there and take that back we're putting a wood deck on this anyway so it doesn't matter if I get any file marks in the deck uh, hopefully, that will solve our problem. So if I push that back in. There you go, right down. So there's a bit of filling needed to be done here. So I think what we're going to do is glue that into place before we fit deck, most likely. So we need to look at what else we need to do as well. Right, filling is done, and you can see that there's lots of little lines here that we need to remove. These are all location points for the plastic railings, and we need to take all of those off, get this all nice and smooth, remove the doors so that we can replace them, um, and remove these little lines that go around, which are basically the handrails. It would be easier to paint microstrip and glue it on than try and paint what's on here. So that's my next job with all of these is to tidy them up and get them ready for fitting. Okay, you might be wondering why I've got one 700 scale chain bar railings. Um, this is um, Edward's item number 17036. Um, and actually we're going to use them for doing foot rungs around the bridge. So um, 
I've got a fair amount here to play with. Um, I've not got a full pack because um, uh, Stephen and I shared this pack. Um, but in theory, one set of railings should cover almost the whole area. Um, so let me just show you where they're going. Um, if you look at this picture, you can see that they go all the way around uh, the bottom there. So the key point is that you've got three rungs and that's what this gives you. Now the real challenge is getting them to conform around the bottom here where we've got quite a curve. Um, so naturally these want to stay straight. Um, they don't want to bend. So I was just having a little play with it and I think I have worked out how we're going to do it and we're probably going to do it in little sections um, at a time I think. Um, this section here is one rung wide fortunately so that's gone really well and then the curve here is a little bit more gentle. Um, so having looked at this uh, what I want to do is shape this front front section first, have that ready to go, glue this in place, then glue the rungs on, then paint it. That's my process. The Bridge of Queen Mary II is situated at the forward end of the superstructure at deck 12 level. Externally, the bridge resembles that of her predecessor, Queen Elizabeth II. But in the Queen Mary II's case, the bridge is fully enclosed, unlike the exposed bridge wings that Queen Elizabeth II had. The reason for that is to ensure that all the delicate electronic equipment and manoeuvring consoles found on Queen Mary II are kept in a dry and protected environment. The bridge has small windows of half height unlike most modern cruise ships that now have floor to ceiling windows. The reason being that should there be a very large wave encountered, the small windows have much less chance of being smashed than the larger windows found on cruise ships. At each extremity of the bridge, each side port and starboard, there's a navigating console with an insert glass panel in the floor to enable the navigating officer to look down. And in fact, shortly after Queen Mary II entered service, the bridge wings were extended with a new glass panel inserted to give even more visibility down the side of the ship. Various consoles are arranged within the, the bridge. Apart from the two bridge wing consoles, there's a central um, command console. And this is where the engines and the steering can be affected. There are various other consoles for the stabilizers and communications equipment and the like. Behind the bridge, on the starboard side is a chart area, passage plan area. Moving across the, the bridge to the port side, on the center line area, there's a viewing gallery so that passengers can watch the activities on the bridge through a glazed um, corridor. And on the port side, at, uh, behind the bridge, there's a special room, the safety control centre, where all the fire control and damage stability, flooding computers are situated. And this is a special room where all the safety aspects of the ship can be controlled. On top of the bridge, there is, there is a hump very much like that found on QE2, and that's where the air conditioning plant is arranged 
that feeds directly into the bridge. Right then, with my bridge glued into place, um, the next task is to look at these two decks. Now, you could go about this um, in more ways than one. Certainly, there is an advantage to finishing this deck off before we put this deck on because the, the, the it's basically two decks. This back one overhangs everything, and this one sits inside um, two little lips, which you're then going to have to bring together because the fit isn't really as, as good as you'd want it to be. Just need to tighten that up a little bit. Um, so here where you've got this overhang of deck at this end, it is overhanging these bulkheads. So you might want to put whatever you're putting on those bulkheads first. Now, for me, I, I've had a look at it and I think I can get in um, the, the doors and bits and pieces that I want to put in there without any, any problem. So I'm actually going to glue this deck in now. Um, so I'm just checking the fit. Uh, we have a little... You can see there's a little cut out there and there's a little lip here and that pops in and what I've found is the best way to fit the deck is to put it in and butt it up against the back of this um, support here and then just tuck it in and that helps you position your deck um, and then we'll need to put some weights on it to hold it in place while it's gluing down. Um, the next problem will be, do we put the wood deck on now, which is possible, um, or do we want to put the basic structures in place and have them painted before we put the deck on? So I need to have a think about that. I, I'd really like to put the deck on now if I can, and then put the structures in. Now, as I've made up the structures, we could place them um, and try and fit the deck around them, but inevitably they'll move and shift and what have you so there's a number of a number of things we need to think about but um, you could if you preferred um, put the upper deck in on its own and and work on that and then put this in after you've done that that area I, th there's options here what I want to do is I want to get the deck in and then we're going to go right back to the bow and move forward and put all the detail on all the photo etch uh, and just get it where it needs to be. So I'm going to start with this deck, uh, which means I need to get some weights and I need to put some glue down. So I will be back in a moment. Just put some Revell contactor down. Um, it's nice, thick, slow setting glue, which gives me some time to manipulate this if I need to. And then just going to weight it down. There we go. So we've got no gaps there. Um, that's butted up nicely against there, although we won't see much of that. Just going to put a little bit of liquid poly on the back because I only put glue on the outside edges there we go and that should hold that deck down so when we look at this one let me just move move her into shot a bit better when we look at this forward deck we've got to fit it into the roof of the bridge and then um, we've got um, the bridge rooftop to go on after that um, but this just fits inside now that needs to be clamped together so I think a couple of sash clamps or a matty clamps would be the way to go there um, and we have to make sure that that is pushed down nicely in there so Uh, I'm going to get some clamps and then we'll have a look at that. Right, putting this deck on, I have had to revert to a sash clamp just to uh, get that back end together uh, and close the gap together. So um, it was just, um, just a little bit loose and I think it was probably when I put the bulkheads in, 
Um, I didn't quite line it up with the um, with the support, so there was a little bit of a gap on each side against the support, so it naturally didn't quite fit right, and I hadn't spotted it. So what I've done is I've just um, put some glue in and softened it up and clamped it together, uh, and that's bringing it back together where it should be, which is good. And then we're just stitching this together. So it's gone into place a lot better now. We can just run some liquid CA in there. Did I say liquid CA, liquid poly? So I've not glued in this bit yet. We'll wait until all of this is dried and then test fit the roof. Um, that way I'm not having to undo things I might have done that are causing a problem. Okay, let's leave that to dry. Right, I'm just having a little play with this bit of deck area here. We have two photo etch plates that go down which mark out where our basketball and uh, tennis courts go. Now, I wasn't sure because I've got the artwork decks that go over the top and that's depicting a wooden deck in that area whereas the photo etch is clearly saying this is a, a steel deck. Um, and I think the truth is actually a, a bit of both. Now, it's difficult to find pictures of, of this in its original configuration. Most photographs you'll find are when the uh, uh, two courts have been moved to this end of the ship after adding more, more rooms and an extra deck. So, having had a look, I think what actually is the case is that there is um, a green material the same as the court, some form of um, rubberized surface or something like that that's probably been put on top of the deck that goes around the outside of these courts. So we shouldn't be seeing corked wooden planking. We should actually have all of this area that you can see as photo etch uh, painted green. This, um, obviously we have decals to go over there but everything else needs to be painted green. So I'm going to just trim the deck at these two connecting points here so that it follows that line. Um, and then the building can go in around there. Now I found a little short bit of video on YouTube which um, someone had taken from inside the court and I could clearly see this outside bulkhead. I could see the underside of uh, this bit of deck, which has a, a bit that comes out here around a radome. Um, I could see the, the little uh, fire boxes uh, here. So I know 
that what I was looking at was orientated from in this point and all of this was green. So I'm happy that's the way I'm going to go. Right, I'm happy that the deck fits okay. Uh, the wooden deck fits okay um, and so does the photo etch deck. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue the photo etch deck in and then we can put the wooden deck in. Um, everything else can get painted as it goes around. The little pool area, I will paint that anyway because what I've found is the deck is so tight that it's scraping the paint off uh, anyway once we put it on and you're having to repaint it. That was my experience on the on the stern decks. So we'll put the decks down and then paint and if we need to mask off, we need to mask off. <laughs> 